Hey there and welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace and today we got a really cool tutorial. This happens a lot of the time when we want to take an image and place it into an environment, but you need to actually copy the shadows and the highlights to make it look realistic. So we're going to show you how to do that, basically pulling out how to extract those shadows and the highlights and reflections from the original image, place it over top of the composite so it looks completely realistic. So here we are in Photoshop. Now, the first thing I want to do is basically take this image. We're going to use our move tool up here in the top left. We're going to take this and click and drag right into our other image and hit F for full screen. Now, this is a really cool photo. I actually want it to be inside of this photo frame here. Now, I don't really want it to be inside of this matte area. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to create a new layer right above here. We're going to hit J, which is going to get to our spot healing brush tool. And we're just going to zoom in and I'm just going to basically remove this mat here. We don't need this. So we're just going to kind of paint with our spot healing brush tool. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect because I want it to fill up the entire frame. So this is, you know, just not needed information. There we go. We're going to pull it back out and then remove that there as well. But as you can see, I have this highlight area here, okay, from my original, and I have this shadow around the actual frame. Now, I want that to actually appear on my composite. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our image here. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna right click. We're gonna go ahead and turn this into a smart object. That way, if I make it smaller, I can make it larger again. I won't lose any resolution. So let's hit Controller Command T for transform, and we're just gonna go ahead and go right up here where you see W for width chain link, and then height. I'm going to click on this height, and I'm going to just drag that to the left. It's a really easy way to resize your images. So just literally click on W or H and drag to the left or the right. That's going to help you resize. There we go. Let's go ahead and put it in here, and let's just resize that a little bit better. Fantastic. That looks pretty good. So now that it's about in place, what we need to do is make a selection where we want it to go. So we're going to make this layer invisible. Let's just click on that eyeball real quick. And then I'm just going to use my lasso tool. So L for the lasso tool. And if you click and hold on it, you're going to see a polygonal lasso tool right there. So it allows me to just select these corners. So I'm going to zoom in here. There we go. I'm just going to click on the top left, go right over here to the top right. You want to be slightly outside of the border of the frame. We're going to go all the way down here. There we go. Click down the very bottom left and I can just double click and it's going to go ahead and connect me all the way up to the top. So now that I have that as a selection, I'll just clean that up in just a little bit where that little thing is right there. Now that I have this as a selection, what we're going to do is turn our layer back on. Okay. And I'm going to load this selection into the layer mask. You can do that right here on the contextual taskbar by clicking on your layer mask icon, or you can click on your layer mask icon right here in your layers panel. Let's go ahead and click there. All right. And we can see already it looks pretty good. Next thing we need to do, we just need to clean up this little area where this was an overlap. So I'm just gonna make this layer invisible real quick. Let's just click on this eyeball here. There we go. And what we're gonna do is go to the regular lasso tool now, and I'm just gonna make a quick selection around these leaves. Fantastic. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Let's bring that down there. And you can hold the Alt or the Option key if you need to minus an area out of your selection, and you can hold the Shift key if you need to add an area to your selection. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn our layer mask back on. And now I want these areas to be invisible on my layer mask. So we click on our layer mask. We go to edit down here to fill. And then we're going to just choose to fill that with black. Black is invisible. White is visible. So let's get hit OK and then Control or Command D to deselect. So it looks like that's actually in front there. OK, looking pretty good. Now, obviously, it doesn't look that realistic because remember the original, we had this like light highlight that actually went all the way through our image. And we have like shadow information. Look at this, all the shadow information that has to be back over top of our photo. So what we need to do now is basically take the reflections and the highlights and the shadows from the original layer, from the background layer, and then place it over top of the composite. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go, let's zoom out. We're going to make this image invisible for now. So just click on that eyeball. Now remember earlier, this other layer that I made, which basically like hid this little matte effect. There we go. I'm just going to merge these two layers together. Okay. I don't need them to be separate la layers. We're going to hold shift and click on the two of those and hit control or command E to merge those together. Now that they're merged together, I'm ready to take the highlights and take the shadows and put them back over top of that. That's going to be in two different layers. I need a highlights layer and I need a shadows layer. So how do we get to those? Well, basically, I already made a selection inside of this area, right? We used our lasso tool. We used polygonal lasso tool. We already made the selection to do the composite. So I don't need to make a selection again. We have this layer. 
we have our layer and we have our layer mask. Now I can turn the layer mask into a selection very easily. Just hold control or command and click on the layer mask and it automatically turns it into a selection. So check it out, control or command, click on that layer mask. It automatically turns the layer mask into a selection, perfect. Let's go ahead and make that invisible. And now here on our background layer, okay, what we're gonna do is hit control or command J. It's gonna duplicate whatever is in that selection onto a new layer. So control or command J, boom. We bet basically same thing, right? took the selection from the layer mask, clicked on the background layer, control or command J, and it duplicated whatever was in that selection. So let's go ahead and double click on that. I'm gonna call that highlight. Perfect. Now I need to do the same thing with a shadow. So let's hold control or command, click on that thumbnail again. Okay, we just need it to be a selection again. Double, just click right there on the background. You need to choose the layer that you actually wanna duplicate from. It's always gonna be the background layer or the base layer where you did the composite. Okay, so again, control or command, click on that. Uh, layer mask again, we have a selection. We have our highlight already. Let's go to the background, control or command J one more time. It's basically the highlight and the shadow are the same. Honestly, I could have duplicated the highlight layer. There's always a million ways to do things. All right, double click here. We'll just call that shadow. Fantastic. Now the highlight and the shadow, we want those both to be on top of the composite. Let's go ahead and make the composite layer visible. And we're gonna start with the highlight. There we go. Now, don't forget, you guys can actually download these sample images and PSD totally free on flurn.com. So if you wanna kinda like see how this is actually made, go and poke around these files and like, you know, try to deconstruct everything, you can do that. Just download it, we'll follow the link right down below to get to those files. Okay, check this out. So we have our background layer. We have the image that we actually wanna put in there and we have a highlight layer and a shadow layer. Okay, so this highlight layer, what we're gonna do is use a blend mode we're gonna use a blend mode that shows our highlights and hides the shadows, okay? And that blend mode is gonna be called screen. So let's go right here where it says normal. We're gonna change our blend mode to screen. And already you can see it works pretty well, but it's like a little bit too strong. It's a little bit too visible. So what we're gonna do is use our levels. Now with levels, what we're gonna do is make our darks darker, okay? And because this is in a screen blend mode, Darks are invisible, lights are visible. So if we make our darks darker, they're gonna become less visible, okay? And then we're gonna do the opposite with the shadow. Okay, so we have our highlight layer, okay? Screen blend mode. Now we need to make our darks darker on this layer. So hit Control or Command L. Control or Command L is gonna bring up our levels. Let's just go ahead and bring that right over here so we can see what we're doing. Now, rem we're, remember, we said we wanna make our darks darker, right? That's the idea. Screen blend mode, lights are visible, darks are invisible. So if we wanna make our darks darker, that's this slider right over here. We just take this black point and bring this to the left, to the right. And as I do this, you can see it's taking, it's just over the reflection, it's this highlight, right? This is all it's doing. It's not, it's not affecting this layer underneath it. It's not changing the properties of the image. It's taking the highlight layer and it's making the darks even darker. And as I do that, it's basically just reducing the visibility of that highlight layer. There we go, and you can kind of bring it back and forth. That's looking pretty good right there. Hit okay. And now sometimes, as you'll notice, it can affect the colors just a little bit. Like if I take that layer and put it back to normal, you can see it really started to affect the colors. So what we're gonna do is go back to screen blend mode, hit control or command U for hue saturation, okay? Because the highlights, when we compress the light range of that highlight layer, it also compresses the color, so it increases saturation. What we need to do now is just take that saturation back down again. So we're gonna take this where it says saturation. By the way, I'm just hit control or command U. Where it says saturation, we're just gonna take this and bring it back down. You can see. See, it was like, if I go up, you can really start to see it exaggerated. Here we go, just bring that back down. Fantastic. And that's our highlight placed back over top of the image. And now, of course, it's its own separate layer. If you wanna take your opacity and bring that a little bit lower, you can do that too. So that's the original highlight from this image. We're gonna take this shadow and do a very similar concept, but in reverse. For the highlights, we used a screen blend mode to just show the lights. For the shadows, we're gonna use a multiply blend mode to just show the darks. Let's show you how to do it. Here we go. So here's our shadow layer. Let's go ahead and turn that on. There we go. So whereas highlight was set to a screen blend mode, shadow is going to be set to a multiply blend mode. Screen and multiply are the exact opposites of each other. Screen shows the highlights, Multiply shows the shadows. Okay, so we have this shadow layer. 
already you can see it looks pretty good, right? If I zoom in here, we can see like, yeah, these are, turn this off and on. That's the original shadows from the original image pasted right over top. And if they're a little bit too dark, again, control or command L for our levels. And then this time, instead of bringing our darks darker, we wanna make our lights lighter. Because remember, screen and multiplier are the exact opposites of one another. So with the shadow, you wanna make your lights lighter. With the highlights, you wanna make your darks darker. And we hit okay. There we go. So let's go ahead and turn those off and on. Boop, there's our shadow. Let's just zoom in so you can actually see. There we go. There's our shadow, nice and realistic shadow all around the border. Composite looks really good. And then we have our highlight back over top of it. And of course I can control my visibility. So if we go in here at the highlight, eh, we want a stronger effect or we want less strong effect, we can do that. But now this composite is gonna look real. Let's go back here Let's zoom in a little bit now and recompose our image. So remember we have our original layer, we set that as a smart object originally. So I can make this a little bit bigger, I'm not gonna lose resolution. Now here's a really cool trick. The layer and the layer mask, by default, you can select each one of these. By default, if I move this layer, check this out, if I grab my move tool right up here at the very top and move this, boom, my effect is broken, right? Let's hit undo. But check this little chain link between them. I have my layer and my layer mask. If I unlink these, now I can move my layer there we go, and the mask is gonna stay in the exact same place. I can hit Control or Command T, we can go ahead and scale this up a little bit, I can bring this on down there, change my composition really, really easily, and because I unlinked the layer and the layer mask, there we go, nice uh, rule of thirds composition right there, pretty good. Because I unlinked the layer and the layer mask, I can now move the layer independently and the mask is gonna stay in the exact same place. When you're done, you can just link them back together and now they're gonna move as one. So here we have our image like, like really nicely applied there. I'm gonna hit Control or Command L on the actual image itself because as we wanna remember, the original background layer is pretty light in color. So I wanna take this image and we're just gonna make it a little bit lighter as well, just so it kind of fits a little bit better. Looks like it's actually being affected by the light of that room. And because we made a smart object, it's gonna be applied as a smart filter. You can turn that levels off and on at any time, or you can just double click there and you can update these settings. Fantastic. So here we have our composite image. It looks really good. I'm gonna hit F for full screen one more time. Look at that. We have the highlights from the original photos and the shadow from the original photos back on top of the composite. So anytime you're doing any type of environmental compositing, this works well if you're like trying to put an image on like a billboard or like an advertisement. Anytime like you need one image placed inside of another, you can always take the original highlights and shadows from that image, place them back over top of your photo and the results are gonna look completely realistic. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna get more free Photoshop tutorials. Thanks again, I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.